So we thank God for our day to day. We want to go further into the service with our offering time. So you have your envelopes ready. Amen. I want you to lift them up in the air. Amen. As we get ready to give unto the Lord. Amen. The Bible says it's more blessed to do what give than to receive. And I know that we quote that scripture pretty often, but I want to encourage you to keep on giving. You don't know when your blessing is going to come. So you keep on sowing, you keep on giving, don't take it and say, I'm not going to give, but you don't give grudgingly. Give cheerfully. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Amen. He loves it when we're happy about giving. Now, some of y'all, when you put your, your envelope in, you need to go to shop because you already got your victory once you get it. Amen. 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 Once, you, once you hit that place, say, Lord, I release it. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. You thank God for what he's going to do. It's not instead of just waiting there, wait for him to do what he's going to do. That's the time we were at all last. I was in prayer for us, like, and the Lord told me I came home from work, and the Lord said, wait, you thank me for keeping you. I said, you sure love me as well. I'm sitting down. Oh, my God. Thank you. I'm sitting down here going through my day, and Lord, this happened, and I'm running late, and this happened, and I'm going all the way. He said, Did you even thank me for keeping me doing it? I said, You should not be. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes in your life that you get so heavy, and when you go to God in prayer, He got to remind us, You should not be. I appreciate you. You know, and then the problem just begins to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Pretty soon we get so far up in praise, we forget about everything else. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thanking him for what he's going to do, what he has done, and what he's currently doing. Amen? Because if it hasn't been for the Lord on our side, accidents, hospital rooms, all kind of violence where it happens to us, but God didn't let it see me. You know that song, Thank You, Lord, for all you've done for me, Warren's heart, and you start playing that. I just want to say thank you for all you've done for me. Amen. How many grateful folks in the house of the Lord know that tragedies are happening in common places? That all these diseases that are happening, how many of you know that if it wasn't for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Amen. Amen. I want you to come and you go in with your offering. Let's go before the Lord in prayer before we do that. That's the wrong song, Mark, but we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. Lord, we thank you for these offerings. Come on, lift up your offerings in the, in the house of the Lord. We thank you for giving us the activity of our lens. We thank you for giving us a mind to be able to come out today. And we most of all thank you for the love of Jesus. We thank you, and we want to show our appreciation by sowing into the work of the Lord. Yes, sir. We want to show our appreciation, our gratitude by giving to you. For your word says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And your word says that when we give, you open up the windows of heaven and pour us out the blessing. We won't even have to open up to receive. So we come cheerfully thanking you as we give our offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. They all belong to you. They all
we want to look at the word of the Lord. Amen. It is the human Sunday, so you want to make sure it gets your because we are going to take communion. For those of you watching by the way of online, we want to let you know you get some bread, some crackers, some juice, whatever you need to have. We do want to let you know we're looking forward to the day to come back into the house of the Lord. But if you're interested and willing to participate in communion with us, you can use anything in your household to partake in the Lord's Supper with us. So we want to invite you to get your articles together now so we can go into our communion service that you'll be ready. Amen? Amen. So if you have the word, the word of the Lord, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter number six. Thank you, musicians. God bless you. Deuteronomy chapter number six. Now that's in the Old Testament. That's the fifth book of the Bible. Amen. You want to look into it. Genesis is the first one. Exodus is the second one. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, if I set them in order. But we want to look at Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verses 4 through 15. Thank you so much for everyone standing as we read the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse 4 through 15. We're going to read 12 verses. I'm reading from the NIV. And if you have the Bible, if you don't have a Bible, you can share with somebody, but we want to all read the word of the Lord together. Amen? Amen. Let's begin reading Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse at verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And press them on your children. We need to teach our children the commandments of the Lord. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Isn't that powerful? We talk about them all the time. That's it. All day long. And there must be a reason why he's telling us to do that. Let's continue on. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foot hands. Your organs. Write them on your door, on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did need to build. I had to just do a little defiance on him. Verse 11 Houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide. Wells you did not even dig, and vineyards and olive groves you didn't even plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods. The gods of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God. Yeah. And his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Father, we thank you for your word, because the entrance of your word gives us the information that we need to become your children. So we thank you that your word is here to help us develop to be pleasing in your sight. I pray for everyone, and, and, and that's standing right now and watching, I ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about don't forget God. Don't forget God. Seems easy to do. Sometimes we might think we don't forget about God, but if we really look at what's going on here in the scripture text, we're going to look at the children of Israel and some tendencies that they had to forget God. All of us have those tendencies where we have those slips. And I know my congregation, which is mostly seniors, we call them senior moments. Amen. 
Y'all can get down and we ain't got a praise on that because that's, we have those moments where we just like, I had one last week and I called one of my brothers a whole other name. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> he said, what you brought me? I said, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I went home and said, God, what, what, what happened? <laughs> just forgot at that moment. So forgetting does happen from time to time. Yes, sir. We don't want to talk about the car keys, house keys, and let's not go to photos. Where, where, where that photo? I don't even remember taking that photo. I don't remember being in that photo. We don't want to talk about that. Remote controls. How about this one? We get to the store and we forgot our business. And then you gotta walk down every aisle to pick up your <laughs> Now, what, what was my reason for the What about when we're about to say something? You're like, wait, what was I about to say? Or you in the middle of a conversation, you're like, what? But then it's real, amen? Yeah. We forget sometimes as human beings. And it must be important to God for him to say, don't forget my word. Because he knows how susceptible we are to remembering things. That's why the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. When your mind is fresh and your energy is all vibrant and you feel like you're invincible. Remember the creator because there's coming a day. Well, you're not going to be so quick in your memory. There's coming a day when you're not going to be able to move as fast as you normally could move. There are coming seasons and times in our lives where we're not going to be as quick about doing things as we used to do them. How many of you ever set out to do something and then when you got up that next day, you're like, I ain't doing that today. You say, I think I'm going to go and I'm going to make this elaborate dinner. And I'm going to cook this. Next thing you know, everything's still in the refrigerator two days later. But you got to just say, who is that? You say, you. <laughs> you put something in the microwave that's really quick, but you just don't want to go through the process. You ain't in the mood to deal with all that. You ain't feeling like doing all that. Because we as people are susceptible to forgetting. The children of Israel are positioned at the border of the promised land in Deuteronomy. After being brought out of Egyptian slavery, crossing the Red Sea on dry ground, and other miracles performed by God, they find themselves at the border of the promised land. They have come to the end of a tedious journey that consisted of commuting by foot now. Not an Uber, not a Lyft, not a horseback ride, but they had to walk through a tedious journey that consisted of commuting by foot through a hot desert. Passing through unnerving views of a never-ending wilderness. And crossing enemy territories, only to find themselves at the border of a foreign land that God says is theirs 40 years later. And before they can go into the promised land, now comes instructions. Somebody say, We gotta go through some stuff. We gotta go through some stuff. To get to where you have gotten to in your life individually, all of you all, myself included, we all have to go through some stuff. You don't come into the promises of God without first having to deal with some stuff. You can't even come to God himself and ask for salvation without going through some stuff. Somebody said we had to go through some stuff to get here. We had to go through some stuff to get here. You didn't come to God because you had it all together. Am I 
find the truth. It was actually the opposite. You gave the God that you were so messed up, you knew nobody else could tolerate you in your mess. You didn't even want to tolerate you while you was in your mess. You didn't want to tolerate yourself, so you knew there had to be a better way. Amen? So the, I think the song says, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. And I found in him a what? Rest me. And then he made me glad. I wasn't glad before I came to him. I had to go through some stuff that caused me to be bitter, angry, mad, confused. But then when I saw Jesus, he said, come on, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I'll change your life and create something beautiful you never thought you would be. Beautiful people that we have in the building that God has changed your life. So they're finding themselves on the border of a promised land that God has said is theirs 40 years later. And now, just like God would, you don't just enter into the promised land, you got to be instructed. You got to be taught. See, many of us are waiting on God to do something for us, waiting on God to bless us, waiting on God to honor our request. But the problem with all this starts is when we get out of the things that we went through in that land, that, that space between coming out and going in. That space of, okay, I know that the storm has passed over. I know that I'm out of this situation, but now I'm in that in-between space of waiting on God how many had to wait on God before? A way on God to fulfill his promise and not get the promise, and I didn't know what to do. How many of you know that that's just a, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's not a difficult space, but it's an unusual space. Because you can't feel really comfortable, but yet you're not uncomfortable. I'm not troubled, but it feels like I'm in trouble. I'm not, I'm, not feeling, I'm not feeling like I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, but it feels like everything is crashing all around me. It feels like the whole world is on fire. Anybody with me that feels like the whole world is on fire? We got killings in Texas, killings up here in Detroit. We got killings every time you turn on the news. Somebody is getting killed by gun violence. The world is on fire. I was looking at the news the other day and I saw that people were at a cemetery and gun violence broke out. Just last night, two people got shot in E Course, Michigan. The president this week had to come on national television to say it's got to be a better way than what we're dealing with right now. So we're in that in between space where it seems like trouble is all around us. And this is where the children of Israel find, is finding themselves at right now in Deuteronomy chapter number six. God has not released them to go into the promised land as of yet. But yet, before they go, yet they find themselves on the cusp looking at what God promised them, but not ready to go in to possess it. To live, to enjoy the promises of God. So, lesson number one that I want to share with you is before we can get anything from God, we must learn how to follow detailed instructions. Because God is a detailed God. You say, How is that? It took him six days. To create the world when it could have been created with his power and hand instantly. The kind of power God has, he could have did it instantly. But he's so concerned about the details, he took six individual days and rested on the Sabbath. He meticulously works out the details. Of what he is planning. God is not like humanity with our lack of patience, 
Lack of insight and poor thought. God is intentional in everything he plans. He wanted the sun to be at the perfect height when he created it. He wanted the moon to be a moon and not a planet to help the earth rotate on its axis. The waters that God created, they could only come so far before the land began. The detail, I was concerned about the details. The trees God created to give oxygen so we could be able to breathe and then create us to be able to give off carbon dioxide so the plants can survive as well. God created everything to be able to need each other. Because he's concerned about detail. Well, my brothers and sisters, that God is so concerned about the details of the earth and the stars and the moon and all the things around about us, don't you think he's concerned about the details of your life? Don't you think he's concerned about what weighs heavy on your heart? Yeah. Don't you think he knows and understands all the things you got to go through on a daily basis? Don't you know that he's just as concerned about the tears you cry? As he is about when you're happy and smiling. God is concerned about the details about us. Every detail, not just some detail, but every detail. And some of us might feel like we, we are a mistake. Like God made a mistake with us. God don't make no mistake. There are no surprises that can happen in this earth that can throw God's plan off. There's no demon in hell that can prevent God's plan from happening. He is God. And when he decides to do whatever is in his mind, there is no, there is no, there is no stopping God. When he decides to bless you, the devil Satan, Lucifer himself can't stop the blessing from God. He can hold it up now, but he can't stop it. Woo! Somebody need to praise him right there. Because your blessing is on the way. It's just being held up. It's coming down. God knows where it's at. He ain't forgot about you. He knows exactly where it's at. But he wants you to know that you got to learn how to listen and love him. While you're in that in-between period. Just like the children of Israel. They were on the cusp of entering into the promised land of what God was going to do for them. The promise he made Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were about to receive years later. But God said, wait a minute, I got to show you some stuff about yourself. So you don't forget about me. God takes time to work the details out concerning the moves he planned to make. And because God is a detailed God, whatever miracles, blessings, answer prayers, or anything else God has for us are specifically designed individually for us. Whatever God gives to his children, he takes the time to make sure it is tailored just for you and I. Isn't that good to know right there? That God took time out. He took time out to create this, the heavens and the earth and seven days, and he took time out just to form a blessing specifically for each and every one of us. My God, what kind of God are we serving that takes time out of this busy schedule to say, I'm thinking about Lawrence the shop and Gray. Right. And I know he needs to get up and work, so I'm going to wake him up early. He don't need no alarm clock. He don't need no cell phone. Listen, if you really want to wake up early, ask God to wake you up. Oh, who's my witness out there? When you ask God to wake you up, he won't just wake you up on time. He'll get you up way enough. You ask me to wake you up, I'm going to wake you up. Now what you going to do? Pray. I'm going to pray. I don't know what else to do. You're getting me up this early. And that scripture in the Bible says, early will I seek you. 
So he's not like us when we forget about somebody's special day and we rush out to give them something just so that they, they can know that we didn't forget and we really did. He's not like us. He don't forget now. When he blesses us, he blesses us and it's specifically tailored just for you and I. He don't have to run out and grab something from the dollar store or wherever else to pretend like, oh yeah, I didn't forget. <laughs> you know how we do it. Oh, it's so and so birthday. I can't even forgot. Let me go out and get. <laughs> and now they got to even buy a gift card and send it online. They get it right in there. Like I was thinking, you lying. You weren't thinking. You forgot. You forgot. Otherwise, that blessing, that gift would be tailored, fit, and specifically for that person. Amen. A person that gives gifts knows how to specifically tailor what you like. Go out, spend time to get it, and make sure it's all that we deliver to you. Amen? Amen? Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Well, I took out time to make sure I, I spent time to show you how much I was thinking about you. Amen. Not just dollar card and so that was <laughs> Give me a dollar card. See, we look on the back, all you spend was 50 cents. <laughs> and then now they got the cards where you ain't got to spend a quarter or something, and you write it there. <laughs> but you won't say. God don't make excuses about why he don't come through, or why he couldn't come through like he promised and make you feel let down. God don't do that. He don't just throw you away either because you messed up. That's not who God is. He's a detailed God that is concerned about your every, the every aspect of your life. Yes, so when you mess up, he is so concerned about you coming back and getting it right, standing with him, he gets you a way of escape. Yeah. He said, confess your sins. And I'm faithful. I'm just to forgive you. And not just forgive you, but I'll wash you up. I'll cleanse you and make you right so you can come back and have fellowship with me. Confess him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just confess him to God. I messed up, Lord. I need a second chance. He said, I stand willing and forgiven, willing and ready to bring you back into right standing with me. He don't just throw you away because you messed up and don't give you a way to escape to get right with him so he can be to you a God and we can be to him a people. God is caring. God is compassionate. God is wise. God is faithful, even when we're not. God is whatever you need him to be, and all you got to do is receive it. So Moses is giving the children of Israel instructions before they enter the land God promised to give them. And Moses starts off with the call to listen. Look at verse number four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So the first thing Moses starts off with is saying, hear, Oh, Israel, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm calling you to listen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Not with some, but with all of who you are, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And so God is telling, Moses is telling the children of Israel, he said, look, children of Israel, You've been through much in these 40 years. You've been through slavery. You've been through affliction. You've been tested. Come on, who's been through this stuff before you've been tested? You've been tried. Some of your family members have gone on. You ate manna from heaven and drank water from a rock. You saw men who didn't believe. God gets swallowed up in an earthquake that God sent while the rest of the people lived on. You even saw a reed bud with flowers. But even though you've been through all of this, one thing I have to say to you, children of Israel, I have to teach you how to listen to God and how to love Him. So this is telling me that we can go through all kinds of mess and still not know how to listen to God and how to love. We can spend years going through things and still not know how to listen and how to love. And God is saying, I got to 
to teach you how to listen and how to love me so you won't forget me, forget me when I give you what I have been wanting to give you. See, God is so rich, it's not a problem for him to bless us with material wealth. God is so rich, it's not a problem for him to give us substance to lead to our next generation after us. God is so wealthy, it's not a problem for him to give us long life. Some of you ask for long life. Y'all just want to live to be a certain age. That's not a problem with God. The problem is what happens after he gives us our requests. After you have come into your promised land like the children of Israel. After you finally meet the right person to spend the rest of your life with. That's when the problems really start. We can pray, Lord, I send me the right one. Lord, we can do all of this. And God has no problem. He is wealthy enough to give you the right person. Listen, there's no lack of men in the church. There's no lack of men in the world. There's no lack of women in the world. God has a remedy and has people assigned to each and every one of us. God has enough for everybody. People talk about it. There's a shortage of men. There ain't, there ain't no shortage of nothing. The problem is what happens when you finally meet the right person. There's not enough churches. Oh, believe me, there is enough churches. Detroit just ride down Purity. Ride down Finkel. There's enough churches. The problem is what happens after you join. Well, there's not enough money. Every week I find myself struggling. The problem is that you just, it's not that you don't have enough money. The problem is what happens after you get money. Well, I just want my children to get saved. The problem is not that your children are not saved. The problem is what are you doing in that household that they can see the love of Jesus in your life? Are you going to steal it out? What are you doing? Well, I just wish I had a car to get it. The problem is not that you're on the bus. Who's with y'all with me on this? The problem is, what are you doing while you're on the bus? Are you just settling that this is my life and this is the way it will always be? Or are you making plans? All right. This will not be me always. All right. All right. I will have my own transportation. Right. I, I, I got one, two, three people. I will have my own real estate. God's desire is that we own, not rent. I said it. Not great. You own something. But this is mine. Why? So I can bless my children and my children's children. All right. All right. And the devil is after the seniors. Follow this. It's a circle of life that the enemy takes us through, that we go through. We start off. God will bless us with a house in our 20s, 30s. We go through life. We hit 50s. We hit 60s. And all of a sudden, we get to an age where we got to go back to being a river. Y'all with me on this? Well, now I can't, I can't live by myself, so I got to find some place that's going to take care of me. So I got to get into some kind of uh, high place or some place where other people are like me. And now the devil got everybody ready. Are y'all with me on this? It's a circle of life. We come out of that only to go back in. And everybody know that the government don't give you enough money to live off of no matter what you do and how many years you work. They give you just enough. And sometimes not even enough. And the goodness of God has to be on our lives. So when we get to the golden age that some of you are at, my sisters and brothers, we can step into destiny. We can step into our senior year and not have to go through some of the hardship some of y'all are going through. I think all y'all should have clapped on that because I don't think anybody in here wants your grandkids, kids to go through some of the hardship you going through. So it's important not to forget about God while you're in your youth and even while you're in your senior because I'm not just going through this just to go through it. I'm going through it for somebody else. My 
children, I'm not going to go through the hardship I had to go through as I was getting up there in age. I'm not going to let it happen. Why? Because I'm concerned about them remembering God. I'm concerned about them not forgetting who he is. Because God is a good God. Even in your senior years, he's a good God. You ever had a situation where you couldn't get out of bed? Where your ankle was hurting, feet was hurting, everything seemed like it was hurting? Then you asked God to help you get out of bed, and he was able to help you step out. Get up. Go to the restroom without assistance. Not have a feeling to uh, who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today? And so we are learning from each other how to live this life not forgetting God. And so the problem is not with God blessing us with good things. The problem is what are we going to do after he blesses us? And he knew that with the children of Israel. He knew that it was not a problem for God to bless them. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, above everything, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul is prospering. What do you mean? Let me help you. As much church as you all come to, I'm talking about this church right here, Body of Christ Community of Faith Church. As much Bible study, Sunday school as we attend, as much as your soul is getting fed spiritually, that's how much God wants you to prosper naturally. We're not just coming up in here just to be in a senior social club. You are dedicating time to God. Press your way to dedicate time to God. God makes time for you. So he said, that I know what you need. And I'm not going to withhold none of the things that you need from you. When you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. Whatever they are. Some of y'all just want to go out to a nice restaurant every week and eat. God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Some of you just want a nice peaceful rest. God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Some of you just want to keep your room clean. God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, Lord, I don't need much. Just let me clean up my house. Well, I'm good. <laughs> Let me be able to vacuum the carpet. And I'm good. Don't you know it's a blessing to be able to vacuum your own carpet and take care of your own self when other people cannot? Some of you are happy with just vacuuming the carpet. I'm happy just washing my dishes. I'm just happy. I'm happy I'm able to just do some things for myself. And I ain't got to have somebody that I got to depend on take care of me. Come on and praise him right there. Come on and praise him right there. And you can do stuff for yourself. And we as children of seniors, we try to step in and go, oh, don't do too much. <laughs> don't do too much now. You might hurt yourself. Don't do that. Wait, wait a minute. Let me help you out with this. Don't do that. Let me give you the. No, don't do that. Don't get up there. Don't do that. Let me help you. I had to learn this lesson. Brother Bias taught me this lesson last week. She said, You know, sometimes we need to do some stuff so we can feel independent. I said, No problem. Mama, you driving every Sunday. <laughs> come on, come on out there and mow that lawn. Come on, man. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> get on over there, get that rain. 
It's a learned behavior that we get because as parents, we don't want our children to get hurt, so we'll be overprotective of them. And so I had to learn that there is a spirit of overprotection that can come. And sometimes you gotta really be spiritual. You gotta step back and allow that child to make the mistakes they need to make so they can mature. You can't be with your children 24 hours, seven days a week. It is impossible. And so the Bible said, if you want to get to the place where you are confident that your children are going to be taken care of, verse 6 says, these are the commands I give to you, that I give to you today, are to be on your hearts. Number 7 says, impress them upon your children. Teach your children about who God is, about how to get us to listen to who he is by what you do. Teach your children. Well, you say, well, how do I teach my children? I'll bring them to Sunday school. I'll bring them to church. That's just bringing them to the house of the Lord. There's some homework even you got to do as a parent. We think homework is just for our kids. And we'll send them to the room, go do your homework. Why? So you can have free time to be on the internet? Or be in front of your favorite TV program? Go do your homework. No supervision. Why don't you get in there and do them timetables, addition, division problems with them? We say, we don't want that. I mean, I remember. <laughs> he gives us the formula for how not to forget God and how to have confidence that our children are going to be taken care of in verse number seven when he says, talk about them when you're sitting at home to your children. When you're sitting and you say, well, my children are all adults. It ain't never too late. Yeah. Talk about the word while you're at home. Not about what your neighbor doing. All right. Talk about it at home. Well, what did you learn in Sunday school today? Well, how was the message? What was the message about? Talk about it at home. Yeah. Not just when you're at home. Look at the next part. But also when you're walking along the road. That means when you're driving in your car. You say, let me tell you about church service Sunday. Let me tell you about what I studied and the Lord revealed to me. See, we get embarrassed talking about the Lord. We think we're not having conversation unless we're talking about something else besides the Lord. When God said, you don't have nothing in this life but me. So you've got to be able to give your children me so that even they can have something when they get older. And when they get out on the streets, you ain't got to worry about them getting gunned down. Why? Because you gave them the word. And as powerful as a bullet is, God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's able to pierce through the body of thunder, to the marrow and the joints, to find the soul and the spirit. We worried about when they go off to school, what's so put the word in them. And once that word comes down in them, you ain't got to worry about nothing. So talk about it when you're at home. Talk about it when you're in a car. Talk about it when you're getting ready for bed. Don't just sit them upstairs, go to bed, time for bed. You're getting on my nerves. Go wrong spirit. You don't see no child of bed because they get on your nerve. I talked about patience last week, amen. Right. Love is patient. Yeah. Go, just go to bed. So I can have some peace and quiet. Your peace is when you talk about what God has done. Well, let me tell you. You say, well, how do I do that? I hear y'all spirits talking to me. I'm going to tell you how to do that. Not just when they go to sleep, but also when they get up in the morning. Why is it that we can get up and go into prayer but we don't make our children? I think I'm going to ask that two, three more times. Why is it that we can go into prayer in the morning Noonday, whatever time your prayer life is, but you don't bring your children. We get embarrassed. I don't know about what. Bring them in the prayer with you. And a good parent, you know what a good parent gonna do? They're not gonna get the kids up and have them get ready to school, get ready for school and go back to bed. They don't do that. They get up and they supervise that their children is getting ready. Can never not the situation in Texas would never happen if there was supervision like that. 
I'm supervising my child. But we got to get to a certain age where they can do whatever they want. But this Bible says, tell it when they lay down. Tell it when they get up. Tell it when you're at home. Tell it when you're walking by the wayside. If, if you're doing it that much, you ain't got time to run else. You say, you know, we'll tell you all about that. Let me tell you how to tell it. You ain't had everything the way you have it now. I said this before. All of us came to Jesus because we were in some type of mess. So what you tell your children is the mess that you was in. But we don't want to do that because that's going to make us look bad. Woo, I don't know. God help me. Help me, Jesus. Nah, I don't know. We don't want to share that mean, evil, corrupt side of who we were because we think that might be too much for that child to have to, to handle. But what we don't realize is when they go to school and get around other people, they're facing the same spirit that you were, and they don't know how to handle it. I said something right there. I said something right there. They got to face mama's spirit, daddy's spirit, granny's spirit, auntie's spirit, all these spirits that they don't know how to deal with all because you won't tell them how mean and ugly you really were. You gotta put up a facade about how, oh, look, I've always been good. I got all this stuff. You didn't get all that stuff on your own. God said, when I bring you into the promised land, you didn't get all this stuff by yourself. God said, I'm gonna put you in positions where you didn't even plant things and you're gonna reap, where you didn't even deserve that promotion, and I'm gonna give it to you, where you don't even deserve to live in the neighborhood you live in, and I'm gonna put you there. You didn't do it on your own. It was the help of the Lord that brought you to where you are today. So don't you hold back on your testimony. Tell your children what you've been through. So they can tell their children's children what they're going through and what they and mama and daddy have been through. Tell it when you lay down. Tell it when you get up. Tell it when they're all through the day long. Your children need to know about what you have been through in your life. Now comes the scripture, greater is he that is in me. Why? Because I overcame all the obstacles that I went through in my life, honey. Baby, you better believe. Mama wasn't always like this. Daddy wasn't always like this. But if it had not been for the Lord, on my side, where? Would I be? Let me tell you about the time when I didn't have food in my refrigerator. And now you got all kind of cereals that you want to have. All kind of milk that you, you got all the things you want to have. Let me tell you about the time when I was starving and I didn't have nothing to eat, no money in the pay. But God made a way. I no way. Let me tell you about the time when I had to go to school and I didn't want to go to school, but I kept coming. And then a teacher one day told me, you know what, baby? One day you're going to be something. One day you're going to amount to something. One day you become a doctor, a lawyer, or something. I don't know what it is, but God has his hand on you. One day you're going to grow up to be somebody real important, but it'll never happen if you don't tell it. You've got to share what you have been through and stop being so selfish with what you have dealt with in your life. Our children need to be taught how to love God, love the name of God, love who he is, Love what he does. Love the church. Love the preacher. Love the pastor. Love the mothers of the church. Love the deacons of the church. Love communion. Love everything about church. We don't want to teach them how to love God because we think it don't take all of that. And then they get lost in society and you wonder what happened. Well, they didn't go to church. I don't know. I raised them. No. What you did is you allowed them to raise themselves and you watched. I'm not going to let the devil sip my children. That's why I went back and I said, I want my kids back in fellowship with me. Give me back my stuff, Amy. You stole years out of my life, but now I'm coming back with my stuff. I want my stuff. I want my relationship back. I want everything you stole from me that I gave you. I changed my mind. I had a change of heart. Now give it back. Give me back my joy. Some of y'all are dealing with the devil stealing your joy from you. Every day you wake up the day of living vision. Ask God to help you get back your joy. That's why we can't fight the devil. Because the devil stole our joy. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our 
So we got to do what we need to do to remember who God is. First eight nine, as we get ready to close. Tie on that symbols on your hands. If you need to put a rubber band around your finger, I don't know. Whatever you need to do to remember God. Whatever. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you all the ways to remember God. But I'm just saying, keep him as the first and foremost in your life. And then he goes on to talk about houses. Write them on your door. Write them on the gates of your house. Put it so when you pull up in your nice car, you can see that you didn't do this on your own. Put it on the, on the door handle. Yeah. Somewhere when you grab it, you can understand, wait a minute, I didn't unlock this door on my own. God had to unlock it for me so I can walk into what he promised me. That I didn't even do nothing to deserve. How many people have received from God where you ain't do nothing to deserve it? You just missed that what he said, was at the right place at the right time, and he opened a door that you couldn't even imagine he would open up. Who am I talking to that was in the right place at the right time? Where God said, I'm going to put you in position where you can be prosperous. How many prosperous people I got in the house? How many prosperous people I got in the house? Prosperity is God's desire for all of us. All of us. All of us. Including your children. But there's a danger to prosperity. God is so rich. He can bless you. It's not a problem for him to give you what you've been asking for. The problem comes after you get it. Are you going to remember who gave it to you? Are you going to remember how you didn't do nothing to deserve it? Are you going to remember that you didn't do it in your own strength, in your own might? In your own wisdom, and your own ways, but are you going to trust and thank God that it hadn't been for Him? Yes, yes. He can give you whatever you're asking for, yes, sir. but don't forget God. Yes. Prosperity yes. is for all of us, yes. no, no. but don't forget God. And that's the danger of our prosperity. He can bless us. So you say, how do you know this, Pastor? I live. I live where God blessed me so much in New York. I came back to show off all the stuff I had accomplished. And God had to bust me down and say, you got all this stuff, rich young ruler. But yet you lack one thing. You don't remember who I am. So I got to show you who I am. I got to remind you And God took the actual lips that he gave me and started using them to communicate back to him. Nothing can stop God from blessing you when he has purpose in his heart and in his mind to bless you. Not even you. You can't even stand in the way of it. So it's important that we don't forget God. Come on, stand to your feet as we get ready to go before the Lord. Yes. Amen. Glory. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good word. Ooh. God is about to do some great things for this church. What are we going to do on the other side? We've got to get ready for what God has in store on the other side. Father, we thank you for this word. I ask, Lord God, that as the word has gone forth from my mouth to your people's mouth, to your people's ears, Lord, that it falls on good ground, that it may spring up and bring forth fruit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they may be able to be participants of what you have given them to do and to be, Lord God, who they are to be, and that they may enjoy the good graces and good pleasures that you have bestowed upon their life and my life, and that we don't forget when we have enjoyed our good blessings that you have blessed us with, that we don't forget where they come from yeah. and who gives them, yeah. but that we keep you first. Yeah. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, praise the Lord. <clears throat>
We're going to get ready for our communion service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Amen. Amen. I want you to know I'm going to start having Reverend Z doing the communion. Amen. 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 And the benedictions. You don't know this. I'm telling you now. We're going to have to do that. <laughs> We don't have to do that because God is calling me into serious prayer. Serious prayer. There is a seat that He has given me that my whole life is changing dramatically. And I'm not scared. I'm not worried. I just want to go in and be pleasing to what He has said. There will be no sandwiches made today. The FDR organization is uh, not in town, so we don't. Uh, we won't be in the back making sandwiches. So directly after services, if you want to. Um, just tell you that's fine, but we will not be in the back making sandwiches. So I want you to get ready as we go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask the Lord to wash us, cleanse us, make us whole, as we make us worthy to receive communion. Does everybody have their communion cups? Does everybody have their cups open? You know it's a task opening up these cups now. <laughs> if you don't, I'll give you time. But I definitely don't want you spilling nothing on your beautiful clothes. Amen. Take your time. Open it up, but this is the time that we want to honor the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is what God told us to do this remembrance of Him. Yes. Yes. Like this message that you can't forget God. God told yes. us to do this so we won't forget. Yes. He didn't have to go to that cross. He didn't have to hum. He didn't have to hang, bleed, and then die for us. He didn't have to do it. But he did it because he loved us. And love is what you do, not what you say. I have to keep reminding myself as well as other people it ain't what you do. I mean, it's not what you say, it's what you do. So God told us to do this. In the remembrance of him. And I feel it's only proper that we all stand as we take this supper. You know, remembering that the, the, uh, the wafer represents his body. Yes. How he was ripped, torn, spat on, ooh, beat. You know, each strike that he received, I take it personal. Like we all should. Yes. He did it for me. Yes. And he and know that he did it for you too. Yes. You know, each each whip that he received. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> but he did. Everything that we deal with down here was he endured it. Yes. He became it. And so he actually became seen. You know, so it ain't, I mean, the battle's already fought. The battle's already won. Yeah, yeah. When we take this communion, so they were up in the upper room. We said, we're going to do this. And he said, uh, but I'm not going to do it right now. It's the stuff I got to do first. Signifying the fact that he had to go to that cross. We say, after it's all over, <laughs> then, and only then, Will he perform it with them? So they all ate together. And they all drank together. Was representing his blood that was shed. And doing the after they um, had the supper, Judas, the betrayer, you know, he was given 30 pieces of silver. He took those 30 pieces of silver and threw it at the Romans and went and hung himself. He hung himself after he realized what he did. You know, so we say to do this in a remembrance of me. But 
before we do it, you know, we should, you know, we ask God, no, cleanse me, make me right. I, I the things I've done, the things I've said, the feelings I was feeling. You know, so we both ask God to remove all those things. So you say, if we take it unworthily and we apply damnation to our soul. So just remember the reason why we do it. Not necessarily what we, I mean, what we're drinking, but why we're doing what we're doing. Hallelujah. And now unto him who's able to keep us from fall and to present us faultless before the throne. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And I ask that you all would uh, pray with me as we go to New York for next week. So I won't be here in service next Sunday. But I ask you to remember us in the prayers. Hallelujah. We are in this Be blessed. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Amen. Love you.